Good evening. Welcome to another foul version of Diatribes. From the voice of Doom. Now here's your fevered and fervent host. Voice of Thought I played it anyway. Prophetic words from John Lydon, aka Johnny Rotten, and the late, not so great. Sid Vicious, don't know his real name. Nothing at. So, and do a quick off the cuff diatribe. I'm not that drunk. I went a couple of days without saying anything, and my uh, anger starts to build. Because I am unfortunate enough to only have YouTube as my entertainment source. And it's probably going to drive me insane. But I wanted to title this Pandemic of, Ang uh, Pandem Pandemic of Anger Redux, because I've already done one version. But i can come up with other things, like the new terrorists... Or some other such thing. We'll see how it goes. But I've been basically thinking that there's very few sentient human beings left on this planet. And if we don't gather together or band together and do something soon, there might be trouble. I'm getting a little angry with the apathy. I'm getting angry with the complacency because the outlets of information are saying what's happening without wanting to do a damn thing about it and I'm getting a little sick of it because I'm seeing the world come to an end and I'm talking about it won't come to an end completely but it will start to deteriorate very badly within the next seven weeks and I will tell you why first of all the D's are in charge right now they control the government, they control the Justice Department across the board, across the whole country. They control the media, and they control a lot of people who don't seem to want to care what's going on because they don't notice. They won't notice until the shelves are bare. Then they'll notice, and they'll get all angry, and they'll blame Trump. But. As far as sentient human beings, very few left, very few. And as Adlai Stevenson once said, you need a majority to win. Now that's what it's all about, winning. I've told you that on my very first diatribe. I said it all on the first episode, if you go back. It's all about winning. It has nothing to do with helping. It has nothing to do with solving. It has nothing to do with anything like that. It has to do with winning. And if you can't win now, you'll win in the future. And you see how it's being done. But the D's will win because they just have a better game plan. The goppers say, we're going to get to the bottom of everything. Yeah, right. I'd like to see them try. And the D's say that the Goppers are all terrorists, and if you vote for the Goppers, you are a terrorist. And it's a perfect, perfect strategy for them. And the reason being is that you push someone hard enough, or you tell someone they're a certain way, and they're going to become that. I'll tell, let's take a kid. And all of his life, his young childhood, through when he can actually understand people, through his adolescent and his er, his teens, he's told constantly that he's bad. He's told constantly that he'll never amount to anything. He's told constantly that he's a failure and he's good for nothing. 
after about 15 years of that, you're going to believe it. You're going to say, okay, I'm good for nothing. And you see what happens. You know what happens. You have shootings. You have people going out on rampages and killing people. And you have people that will be in the system unless they're let out by the left-wing arm of the Justice Department. But you have a problem because you told that person over and over again how bad they are. Now, I've seen it happen. I've been on the planet long enough. Now, they're doing this with the goppers. They're saying if you voted a certain way or if you question the integrity of a certain vote, you're a terrorist. And these D's have it planned perfectly because they win no matter what. If they say over and over again that the other side are terrorists and they're anti-American, they're anti-democratic, and they're anti-constitution, which they don't believe in at all. They don't give a crap about any of that. They just want to make sure people know that their opposition is the enemy to everyone. Now you push someone far enough and say you're a terrorist, you just can't wait for a terrorist to show up, can you? That's what you're pushing for. That's what you're trying to do. You're poking the bear, hoping that the bear lunges. That's that guy. I poke you, lunge at him. That's how it's all working now, because when one gopper, and I don't care who it is, they could be anybody, if they are one millimeter right of the center, and pull off something because everyone tells him he's a terrorist or her then they're gonna have their fodder until November 8th they're gonna have their example so they're pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and they're pushing big time man they're really pushing everybody because I'm a Buddhist I believe in cause and effect I am very angry and if I hadn't been practicing the correct religion I don't know what I'd be right now but I think I'd be, well, I'd be at the shooting range a lot. And I'd amass whatever because I'd be going, you know, I'm a, I'm a terrorist, so I'm going to be one. But I'm not that way, and I'm not going to be that way because that will accomplish nothing. Everybody's got to get together and say, we're not terrorists. And... There's been a lot of shenanigans going on, and when I say shenanigans, I'm talking about a game board. I'm not talking about what's really been going on, which is absolute treason on the part of the D's. And they are turning it around, projecting, and saying, and I guess they call it gaslighting now. You project onto the other group what you're actually doing and doing with impunity because you have the entire government, the Justice Department and the media on your side nodding their heads together going yes we're going into a Nazi state now um, I just mentioned a couple of other things that are getting me a little concerned now Ukraine is making great strides in pushing back the Russian forces which is all well and good. I don't know if you notice or have heard, but Vlad the Mad is having a night of the long knives over in his country. He's getting rid of a lot of the upper echelon people in his government that might be a threat to his regime. Now, put together the night with the long knives by Vlad, together with the Russian forces are being pushed back. Now, what is Vlad going to do? Go back to Moscow with his tail under his legs, going, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Going, yes, we lost, we encroached on the Ukrainian territory, and they pushed us back, and we're now going to go back and say, all, all is over, we're sorry. <sighs> people that believe that, or people that are living in some sort of world where nothing bad is ever going to happen, are dreaming. Because Vlad's going to pull out all the stops to make that not happen. And that can mean anything. 
That could mean Finland being right on the border with Russia and being part of NATO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That could mean the Ukraine being atomized. That could mean bombing a nuclear power plant and causing a environmental nuclear disaster. The number of problems that could happen. I couldn't do it on this internet. There's not enough room. We all know what could happen. Everything. Other places decide they're going to, you know, encroach on their areas. I've already talked about all, how all this could happen. Once the crap starts flying, man, everybody starts going at it. Look at history. Look at World War II. When one country starts going against another country, all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose everywhere. So... I wanted to get that off my chest. And the reason I'm more angry than usual is because by watching YouTube all the time, now I get feeds on my home page. And it's very varied. I get Baccarini from the Baroque era. I get Renaissance music. I get the uh, Looney Tunes. They've watched all my stuff on YouTube. The bots have. So they send me all kinds of stuff that I've talked about. So I've talked about all kinds of crap. I get all kinds of crap, but I get a lot of stuff that's commenting on TikTok, commenting on their content, and that's scary and it's maddening, and then it leads into people that comment on Karens and Kens, or Kyles or Chads or whatever you want to call them. Just officious people. And that gets you angry because you see these women and men just making a big deal out of nothing and wanting to call the police. And that's where I see that these lefties might have a point. Where you get a lot of social workers to be police because half of these things they want to call the police for is like, I ordered a sandwich and the bacon wasn't crisp and now you're dissing me. I'm going to call the police. Come on. I can't wait till things really bad start happening so you realize how your crispy bacon was really, really trivial. Really trivial. You're going to see no bacon. None. No eggs. No butter. No pancakes. Nothing. And then you're going to go, man, why was I complaining about the bacon? And that's going to happen soon. That's why I'm getting a little angry because nobody's going to do a damn thing about it. There's going to be food shortages by the middle of winter. Europe is going to be in a shambles, absolute shambles. What used to be the United, whatever they are, states, already in a shambles. Just keep on pumping people into the country and now they're shipping them here, there, and everywhere. It's all being used as a political football, a literal political football. And eventually they will ship in a nuclear bomb. So there's no end to how many bad things could happen. But I think social workers would be good to go in with their, their big glasses on and their nose ring and they can have their little clipboard and a belt that has some mace on it and say, what's the problem here? Well, he's beating me to a pulp. Um, well, can we talk this out? That would be great days in America. Well, whatever used to be this landmass that we used to call America. That would be funny to see. <clears throat> so it was one of those random diatribes. I think it was kind of a good one. Because I got a lot off my chest. and It's good for me. It gets me. It's cathartic. It releases my chemicals that are building up and ready to explode, 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 explode. Well, never mind. Um, I'll call it a day. Thanks for listening and putting up with this stuff. And hopefully somebody heeds my word because it's going to be bad. Seven weeks. All right, then. Bye-bye.